my name's Brent Seach. I'm a painter and decorator. I've been for 33 years now and run a, uh, a small business in Albury Wodonga. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us on this Business Spotlight interview, Brent. Um, maybe if you could just start with uh, introducing what it is that your business actually does. Okay. Um, most people hear painter and decorator and they just assume uh, lounge room wall, uh, ceilings, those sorts. While we do do some stereotypical painting, I, I tend to be more on the bespoke finish side of of painting so we do a lot of uh french washes lime washes um just different finishes for for different clients so yeah it's 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 a bit of a niche market yeah so who, who would make an ideal client for you then oh well greedily anyone that thinks that 900 dollars fendi t-shirt is a wise investment would be a great client but um <laughs> uh, basically people that are I tend to work more with interior designers mm -hmm. than, than directly with clients. Um, so they're trying to create themes. They're trying to create feelings uh, rather than just looking at painting as a, as a necessary part of a, 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 a solution to a problem. Right. Okay. And so do you work more with residential or commercial or both? How, how does uh, that work? Both, but it heavily weighs towards the residential. So um, commercial, it tends to be smaller commercial and it tends to be architect driven there. So the architect will actually ask for a finish. I'll be able to do that finish. And it's sort of, it, I, I'd leave the office side of it out. It's more towards the hospitality side of things we mm -hmm. tend to do um, where, where they're trying to create atmospheres. Yeah, fantastic. So tell me, how did you actually get into this bespoke painting event? Okay, uh, I'm glad you asked. No, well, I'm I'm what they call a Dulux accredited painter. So um, I've got the backing of Dulux Australia as a whole uh, with my work, uh, all those sorts of things. And one of the companies that they have is called Porter's Paints. I'm not sure if anyone out there has heard of Porter's, but they're a fantastic company, do some gorgeous finishes, gorgeous colours, and I'm what they call a, uh, a Porter's Guild member. So mm -hmm. I'm the only Guild member between Sydney and Melbourne, which means that I'm the only person that Porter's, the company, will actually recommend to do their work between Sydney and Melbourne. Wow. So it okay. keeps, me, keeps me reasonably busy. Yeah. Yeah. So you do a bit of travel then? Um, yeah, I, I, I do selected travel. I don't want to sound like a snob and say I'm only doing it, but I've got to be mindful of local clients too. So you have to make sure that while things may be shiny and sunny in, in Melbourne and Sydney, that I don't neglect my, my core customer base. Yeah, yeah. And so do you have much competition in this bespoke area then? Uh, I, I honestly don't know. We're, we're sort of competing more against overall budgets than than other people, uh, like other people doing these types of finishes. There's, there are certain finishes that are very competitive. I don't do them with Venetian plasters. Um, in the capital cities, I think I'd get a lot more competition, but there'd also be a lot more work. Mm. So it's, you're sort of making that trade-off. But as far as competition goes, um, it, I, I tend not to pay a great, deal of attention to to competitors I'm, I'm just worried about the product i'm putting out yep, and the experience sure. i'm giving the customer yeah okay no fantastic and so brent what would you say is the biggest challenge that you're actually facing in business right now um the movement of the market seems to be before your eyes at the moment whereas once upon a time you'd see trends moving over time but um customer attitude at times can be a, a little bit a little bit worrying mm -hmm. uh, basically because of the wait times that are involved with getting a trade now anyone that's tried to get any trade in the last two and a half years will know that everyone is very heavily booked yep. um, so so just keeping those people 
um, excited about their job and not frustrated that it's not getting done today. That'd be the biggest challenge. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, when you think about your journey in business, yeah, what's been some of the biggest learnings that you've actually had about business? And then secondly, about yourself. Oh, wow. That's, we could stay here for a while on that one. Um, in business, uh, uh, it will pass. Like the, the amount of work we have at the moment will pass. The, the, there's trends, there's, yeah, I, oh, that's a, man, you've got me really thinking now. It's, um, well we'll go to what i've learned about myself i've learned that things are never as bad as i think they are i can always mm -hmm. it. okay so everyone gets anxious everyone gets stressed but usually the thought of what is coming up is worse than actually doing it or yep. or dealing with that that situation or or whatever is worse than actually doing it so just, just learning to probably be a little easier on myself, be a little more mindful. Um, mm. But as far as business goes, just, just try to treat yourself and your business completely separate entities. Don't, don't get the tomb up. Uh, when I walk in the door, I'm, I'm no longer Brent Siege Painter. I'm Brent Siege. I'm Brent. You know, I'm, yep. I'm a husband. I'm a, I'm a father. I'm a, all those sorts of things. So just, just trying to make sure that I'm. I, I, draw that line because yep. it got very blurry once and it can get very messy yeah and, and why is that important to you uh as in distinguishing that, between the two yes well, because I, I i i work to live i don't live to work so yes. while i i love what i do i love creating uh i get to be creative as a painter and decorator which is very unusual but i also think i've done really really well with my partner i think she's amazing and i want to spend time with her i want to spend time with my kids but it, I've, I've got to be able to be present with them rather than thinking about work do you know what i mean like yeah, as tradies we tend to get caught up in our own head yeah uh, so it's more about um yeah making sure that i'm i'm when i'm with them i'm with them not with any person but mentally somewhere else yeah, so it's about being present, finding that real balance between, you know, totally into the business and oh, yeah. having 100%. the ability to switch off as well. Oh, yeah, 100%. And sometimes we need to push. Yeah. Sometimes work dictates that, okay, we've got to, we've got to have a bit of a go here, but um, you've just got to make time later on. You can't, you can't constantly burn that candle at both ends. Yeah, what would you say to somebody that was thinking about going into business, Bryn, based on your own experience? I I would a hundred percent. You you'll never you if you're working for yourself, you'll never work a day in your life. It's everything you're doing is for the benefit the the betterment of you and your family, rather mm. than. I'm not saying working on wages is bad. Um, It'd be really good if you could do a business apprenticeship uh, in the type of business that you want to run. Um, I think that was the fantastic thing I had was uh, I got to see a really successful bit of painting business run by someone that made it so ridiculously simple. Yep. Like it doesn't have to be complicated. It was just so simple and yep. they were just such easy steps to follow. Um, yeah give it a go and don't be afraid to don't be afraid to fail it's as there's someone that this is my second go at, at running a painting business don't be afraid because the worst case scenario you're going to find out how not to do it absolutely so. and, and i guess the important thing is that you learn from your mistakes and um you know for that next time round. oh yeah 100 percent. yeah so what keeps you getting out of bed every morning how do you keep yourself motivated uh keep myself motivated i mean the uh 
the the Reserve Bank of Australia just gave me a fantastic reason to get out of bed about an hour and a half ago, raising those interest rates. So, um, but getting me out of bed, I just, I just love, I love doing what I do. I love, mm. I mean, unlike a lot of other jobs, once my job is finished, I can actually look back at my day and go, wow, I did that. Yeah. Um, and I can drive past a number of streets and go, wow, that's still looking amazing. I see people down the street and they, you, you get recommendations from friends and those types of things are just really, I don't know, it just makes your, your day feel really, really worthwhile. And that makes you a... Yeah. Yeah. So you, 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 you actually get to see the fruits of your labour through the work that you do. Yeah, 100%. I tried for, for three long months, I tried to, uh, to try to stop being a tradie. I tried to work in an office and um, I, I really struggled for me personally with looking back at my day and just thinking, what have I done? Yep. What, what have I done? Um, I just, yeah, I'm a very visual person. So unless I could see it, I just didn't feel like I'd done anything. Yeah. All right. So one final question then is, yep. you know, if you were to start the business again, would you do anything differently? Absolutely not. If it wasn't for the way I'd, I'd stuffed it up the first time, if it wasn't for all the things that had, it, it just wouldn't be where it is at the moment. And I'm just so happy with how it's going, uh, the service I can provide to clients. Uh, the finishes I can do. I'm just so, so over the moon with how it's going that uh, I would hate to tempt fate and uh, and try to re-roll the rock. And uh, yep. yeah, I, th I think I've been a, yeah. Okay. And any final words of wisdom um, that you'd like to share with anybody that might be watching this video? Words of wisdom, wow. Um, uh just be be patient if you're in a rush to do anything be in a rush to be patient um it it doesn't have to happen overnight just just work just and and, and go easy on yourself you know you're not you're not meant to be as a small business owner we seem to put on so many caps and seem to think we have to be so many things. You don't have to. Just be exceptionally good at one thing and everything else will fall into place. Great words of uh, advice there, Brent. Thank you so much for, for uh, joining us on this uh, Business Spotlight interview today. Thanks. Bye. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye.